Welcome to the iPhone 13 Pro Max unboxing and review. Beside this, I will also have a comparison with my 1 year old iPhone 12 Pro Max. I hope this video will give you a better idea of what the new iPhone Pro update looks like. The one I bought is Serial Blue with 256GB version. This year, Apple removed the plastic packaging for environment friendly. That's a good change. The blue looks very light, even a little gray. The backside touch feeling is same to 12 Pro Max. Same to last year, there is only one charging cable but no adapter. Let's turn it on. After some initial setup, we got into the system. The pre-installed system is already updated to iOS 15. Let's have a design comparison to the iPhone 12 Pro Max. The backside color is much lighter from last year's blue. I personally more prefer this new color. Apple redesigned the whole camera module this year. The size becomes larger to handle three bigger camera sensors. Because of this change, the case is not compatible between these two machines. Another big change is the front Face ID notch. Apple moved the speaker to the top edge and the whole Face ID module shrink around 20%. Let me guess. This is a preparation to totally remove the front notch in the future by replacing the Face ID with an underscreen Touch ID. For the weight, 13 Pro Max is 14 gram heavier compared with the 12 Pro Max, but it is acceptable with this size. Alright, let's talk about the biggest improvement this year, the screen. Finally, Apple loaded the high refresh rate screen to the iPhone Pro series. Apple names it as ProMotion. The new screen has a dynamic refresh rate from 10Hz up to 120Hz. It will depend on what the application are using. For example, you will get 10Hz when reading a book, 24Hz when watching a movie, and 120Hz when playing a game. Compared with the 12 Pro Max, this new screen just everything so smooth. For me, this is the biggest reason I upgraded my phone. The second important upgrade is camera system. The main hardware improvement is about the wide and ultra-wide camera. Apple increased the aperture for both of these two cameras and increased the sensor area for the wide camera. Increasing the aperture can let more light get into the sensor and a larger sensor size can reduce the noise, especially at low light conditions. For the telegraph camera, Apple changed it from 2.5x to 3x optical zoom. The new focal length is equivalent to 77mm. Let's take some real photo and a video comparison. This photo is shot at night. We can clearly see the 13 Pro Max has a much better highlight control. Besides this, the 13 Pro Max has a faster shutter speed at a night shot. For video, we can get a similar conclusion. The highlight and the noise control are both getting better in 13 Pro Max. But the 13 Pro Max still have the glare issue. It needs a coat of the lens to fix that. Another new feature is the cinematic mode video shooting. Based on the reader sensor and the runtime machine learning, the phone can realize auto shift focusing target and simulate the bokeh out of the focusing plane. Usually, this bokeh can only be achieved by the optics of DSLR's wide aperture lens. iPhone makes this process extremely simple. Even the result is still a little bit unnatural compared with the optical lens. Compared with the 12 Pro Max, the cinematic mode is easier to use the video language to tell story to the audience. Another interesting feature is the macro photo. When you move your phone close enough to a target, the phone will auto switch to the ultra wide camera and auto focus on the target. The minimum focus distance can as close as 2 cm. Let's talk about the performance. Apple have three variants for the new A15 chip this year. They put the most powerful CPU on this 13 Pro series. Compared with the 13 series, it has one more GPU core, and compared with the iPad Mini 6, it has around 10% higher operating frequency. So far, this A15 on the iPhone 13 Pro Max represents Apple's highest achievement in the mobile chips. For the performance, Apple didn't talk much about the CPU improvement between the A15 and A14. Let's have a benchmark test to clarify that. Both of the 13 Pro Max and the 12 Pro Max are running at the same 6GB RAM. Geekbench 5 is a testing software to simulate the CPU performance in daily use. A15 finished the test a couple of seconds faster than the A14. The new A15 chip is still using a 5 nanometer process with the same CPU architecture. I didn't expect a big jump of CPU performance. The results confirmed that. The single core is only 7% higher from A14. The multi-core score performed slightly better. 
it is around 14% higher from A14. I also add a comparison to the iPad Mini 6. We can clearly see the benefit from a higher operating frequency. After the CPU test, I thought Apple didn't have an impressive improvement for the A15 this year. But until I tested the GPU and the gaming, I thought I was wrong. Based on the Geekbench 5 test, the computing score of A15 is around 35% higher than the A14. Even the 4 GPU cores iPad Mini 6 is also much better than the A14. This powerful GPU and the neural engine can provide a better gaming IPS and machine learning speed. I tested the Genshin Impact on both of the two phones, which is the one with the most GPU usage gain so far. Compared to the frame rate in 30 minutes, both of the phones can run at 60Hz at the beginning. 12 Pro Max start to degrade the performance at 6 minutes. 13 Pro Max performs a better result. It starts to degrade the performance at 12 minutes and can maintain a higher average frame rate after the degradation. We can see both of the two phones are limited by the thermal threshold, but the new A15 chip gives the 13 Pro Max more margin. After 30 minutes gaming, the two phones reach to a stable temperature. We can see they both have a peak temperature around 43 degrees at the motherboard area. But the 13 Pro Max has a smaller hot zone compared with the 12 Pro Max. Let's talk about the 5G speed. I'm using a T-Mobile N41 band 5G signal. I took an average of 3 round speed test results for both of the download and upload. The result shows the iPhone 13 Pro Max is slightly slower than the 12 Pro Max. This is only for N41 band at my place. You can share your 5G speed in the comments below. Getting both phones in the engineering field test mode, we can take a look at the real signal strength. The RSRP indicates the received signal power strength at the antenna. The unit for this parameter is dBm which is a log format or milliwatt. A smaller absolute number of this parameter means a higher received power. The iPhone 13 Pro Max shows 2 dB better than the 12 Pro Max, but this is really a small difference. I would say the R front-end performance are really close for these two phones in this case. Another big improvement of this year's new iPhone is battery life. The main contribution is the increased battery capacity. 13 Pro Max gets around 17% larger battery compared with the 12 Pro Max. Besides this, a more power efficiency A15 chip and the adaptive refresh rate screen both help 13 Pro Max have a longer battery life. Based on my using experience, I can use 13 Pro Max 2 days without charging, which was 1.5 days for 12 Pro Max. Which one should you buy? Among this year's 4 iPhones, I mostly recommend the 13 Pro. Since between the Pro and the Pro Max, the only difference is screen size and battery. And compared with the 13 series, it has a better screen, camera system, better GPU, and a longer battery life. All of these improvements are pretty noticeable in daily use. One more thing, if you have demand for the ProRes roll with 4K resolution in 30p, you need to choose at least the 256GB Pro version. Hope you can like this video. Thanks for your support. See you next time.